So now that we've been talking about some of these descriptive statistics, you know, uh, the, the keratosis, the skewness, mean, uh, you know, one of the things that you almost commonly have to deal with when you're dealing with data is this idea of whether or not your data is normal. Uh, the entire approach to that is if we're kind of looking at this nice little graph here, you know, we want to be on a very simple normal distribution bell curve that, that models uh, a traditional bell curve. But if we have something like a high kurtosis or very negative kurtosis, or we go with skews again, uh, we're no longer normally distributed. And so as a result, uh, different statistical tests have to be done. So how do I go about doing that? How do I check for normality? Well, there are multiple steps to it. It's very, uh, some of these can be just very straightforward uh, if you think about it. So the first one obviously is just check uh, a histogram of your data. If I came in and simply just plotted a histogram of uh, our generated data, you know, okay, eyeballing this, it looks normally distributed or somewhat normally distributed. Uh, it, everything seems to be kind of going up and down in the right way. Well, the reason why is, again, if I just eyeball this without doing any extra tests and whatnot, if I generated uh, data where 17 was the midpoint, you know, again, it's now uh, hanging heavily to the right. And so as a result, just from eyeballing this, I don't need to do any other statistical tests. I don't need to you know, learn any math, do any math. Just from that right there, I can go, oh, well, this is not, this is normally distributed. Same thing could happen on the right side or the left side uh, where it's now on the 15. You can see, oh, well, you know, it's all hanging out over on the 5. That's not normally distributed. Moving on. But maybe you're running into issues where uh, the data could be, you know, all right, you know, you eyeball it. I, I, now I put mine uh, at the middle point of a 12. Okay, well, it might be, it, it may be slightly off, but I can't quite tell. And that's where, again, you would start to look at the kurtosis. Uh, so again, uh, that's where we're using SciPy to just check out, uh, not the kurtosis, the skew, skew of my data. And the further that this goes from X, all right, well now we're starting to kind of bleed into uh, bad territory. You know, once again, uh, if it was a 10, 10's very close to zero uh, here, even though it's slightly off, okay, again, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get perfect data. Uh, so it's ever so slightly uh, moving uh, very close to zero, but as you can guess, if I move to something like 17, again, we see it's very far away. So that same kind of approach can happen with my uh, 12. Now, the big thing is with this, we're only talking about skewness, right? We're only uh, talking about how it flows uh, from left to right. The next approach is that you could use some statistical tests that also take in kurtosis. So the vertical, uh, if you again think uh, this is the horizontal plane, the vertical plane of our data, uh, and I'm going to butcher these names, so, uh, but the Kolmogorov Smirnov, I know that word, uh, and the Shapiro Wilk tests. Each one of these is going to effectively uh, look at the data with both the kurtosis and the skewness intact and determine whether or not your data is normal. How it does that is by saying, well, if that test is not significant, if it's, it's, if it's p-value is below some threshold, it is not significant. And these are pretty straightforward to run into. So if I were to uh, let me unpack some of those data, so I'll start with the Shapiro-Wilkes. So the Shapiro-Wilk has a w and a p-value that are uh, returned when we're working with the function, so uh, stats dot uh, Shapiro, Shapiro x, and we'll go ahead and Shapiro Wilk w is going to be that, and then the p value equals that. Now, format dot format w p p. 
okay, so just to at least see this. Again, we always like to test to make sure our data uh, is doing what it, it should. And so if we run this, we see, oh, well, there's my Shapiro Wilkes. There's my uh, W value for that. And you can notice that uh, at the uh, middle point of a 12, we're kind of, you know, we're teetering, you know. That's getting into a whole nother argument of whether or not this would be considered significant or not. That is for other people to deal with. I'm not going to put that in, you know, I'm not going to make a decision with that. But that's where, you know, I would make an assessment on this about whether or not my data was normally distributed. Uh, if, say, for example, I went with a 10, again, this is the normally, normally distrib uh, the perfect normal distribution. You can see that uh, in this situation, uh, it is not significant, and so it is normal. If, however, I went with a higher number, in this case, you can notice, well, 17, uh, and even though it says a, a 1 here, it's actually 1.7 uh, times 10 to the negative 6th power, so it's incredibly low. Oh, okay, well, the same thing on the uh, 5 approach. And we can see here uh, it is uh, well below our p value and or well below the uh, 0 .0, 0 0.05 uh, sort of significance test that everyone works off of. So, oh, well, this data is not normal. Okay, well, we have another approach as well. The uh, Again, I will butcher it, uh, the Klomogorov Smirnov. I'm going to call it uh, case smear. No, uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but it has, in its case, a D value. Uh, so the same approach. Now, I think SciPy uh, developers were on the right track. They kind of knew what was going on here. And even they were like, I can't pronounce that or that's too much to type. So we're going to call it KS test. Much easier. Now, the thing about KS test is, one, you do have to pass in the data that you're working with, and you also have to pass in a string parameter of what you're testing for. In this case, we're testing for normality. So I'll come in and I'll uh, print those out. So, Klomogorov Smirnov. Uh, let's see there, the D value is gonna go uh, in the zero slot, <clears throat> and the P will be here. Mm -hmm. That format D P. So again, we'll go ahead and just run this as normal. Now, the big thing that I, I do like to point out is you can see, oh, well, it's got uh, some data going on. Now, realistically speaking, though, this is where it depends on what kind of data you're working on. Because, again, if we look at our uh, 10 middle point, right? The 10 middle point uh, is what everything else has said is normally distributed. It's, you know, the, the histogram looks fine. The skewness is very close to zero. But if you were to run uh, the uh, smear, not, the K-Schmear uh, analysis, you're going to see it's got a very, very low p-value. And so this is sort of one of those times where, again, uh, there are multiple ways to check for uh, normality. All of those flags do not technically have to be uh, set. And I know that there's probably some statistician out there who now wants to know where I live so he can hit me or she can hit me, they can hit me. Uh, but the big idea here is this is why you're running through multiple tests. Uh, Shapiro Wilk says that we are uh, a normally distributed uh, set of data. Uh, Kashmir does not. Uh, so you got to kind of play with it. And this is where uh, you, you really need to make those assessments. It's not a perfect science. It's uh, making analysis and then determining what you can from that data. The one thing I would say is if you are hitting... Uh, these large p values, most likely that is not the statistical test that you should be doing for your data. So in our case, we're just dealing with a bunch of numbers getting generated. Maybe the k Shmirnov uh, test is not what we're looking for. But either way, here's a way you can check for normality.